We've been working with trig identities, and today I want to introduce a new group of trig identities associated with sine and cosine functions. Uh, these are called the sum and difference identities. If you read the lesson that goes along with this video, you'll see some background about these four formulas. But I just want to summarize um, their statements and then also how we use them in this video. So we have two formulas that go along with the cosine function. Uh, there's the sum formula, which is cosine of alpha plus beta. And it turns out that is the same as uh, cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus sine alpha, sine beta. So that is an identity. And then there's a difference identity, which is the cosine of alpha minus beta. And it turns out that is equal to cosine alpha, cosine beta, plus sine alpha, sine beta. And I just want you to realize that these signs, the, the plus sign here and the minus here are opposites, and the minus sign here and the plus sign here are opposites. So with cosine, uh, the sign in between is the opposite of the one in parentheses. And then we also have sum and difference formulas for sine. And the, it turns out that the sine of alpha plus beta is sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. And the sine of alpha minus beta is sine alpha cosine beta minus cosine alpha sine beta. And in particular, I want to note that this time, if it says plus in the parentheses, it's a plus in the formula. If it says minus in the parentheses, it's a minus in the formula. And that the sine formula is sine cosine cosine sine whereas the cosine formulas are cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So if you're working on memorizing these, please pay attention to those subtle differences. The goal of this video is to work through some examples where we use these two new identities. So one of the first things you're going to use these identities for is calculating the exact values of some radian measures that are not on our usual unit circle, so we don't have these memorized. You weren't asked to memorize sine of pi over 12. And yet, what we're going to do is we're going to use our new identity for sine to turn this into a sum or a difference so that we can find the exact values off the unit circle. To do that, I'm going to bring the uh, formulas back in for the sine function. So here are those, those two formulas, and what I'm suggesting is if we can turn pi into, over 12 into a sum or a difference of two values on the unit circle, then we can use this part of the formula over here to translate this into a unit circle problem. Let me show you how we do that. I happen to know through experience that pi over 12 happens to equal pi over 3 minus pi over 4. And just to convince you that that's true, let me show you. Uh, pi over 3 is actually 4 pi over 12. And pi over 4 is 3 pi over 12, right? That's a common denominator there. And when you subtract them, you do get pi over 12. So I'm going to use this fact along with this formula to show you how I can use my unit circle to get sine of pi over 12. So I'm going to write it down like this. Sine of pi over 12 can be rewritten using the difference formula here in the chart as sine of pi over 3 times cosine of pi over 4 minus cosine of pi over 3 times the sine of pi over 4. And I did that just by applying this formula here on the right. Because I know that pi over 12 is the same as pi over 3 minus pi over 4, I just simply say, hey, the pi over 3 is the alpha, and the pi over 4 is the beta, and then I put those into the formula. Now I need my unit circle knowledge to finish this problem off. So I happen to remember that the sine of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2. And the cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. And then the cosine of pi over 3, that happens to be 1 half. And the sine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. 
And so I can simplify this to, this is the square root of 6 over 4 minus the square root of 2 over 4. And then we can subtract those and stop with negative, uh, square root of 6 minus square root of 2 all over the square root of 4. And that happens to be the exact value for the sine of pi over 12. It's a little more complicated than most of the unit circle values that we've memorized, but it's the sine of pi over 12 nonetheless. So square root of 6 minus square root of 2 over 4. Okay, let's try another one. In this example, we're going to do a similar problem, but this time we're going to do the cosine of 5 pi over 12. So let's bring in those cosine formulas just so we can refer to them. So again, we're going to try and turn 5 pi over 12 into either the sum of two values that we know or the difference of two values that we know and then use the formula associated with that sum or difference to find the exact value uh, just by using unit circle values. So 5 pi over 12, remember, we need to change that into a sum or difference. I happen to know that 5 pi over 12 is the same as pi over 4 plus pi over 6. Let me show you why I think that's true. Pi over 4 is actually 3 pi over 12, and pi over 6 is actually 2 pi over 12. So when I add those together, I do get 5 pi over 12. So rather than find the cosine of pi over 12, I'm going to find the cosine of this sum. So the cosine of 5 pi over 12 but we'll write this pi over 4 plus pi over 6 is going to equal. And remember, we're going to use the alpha and the beta. Alpha is pi over 4 and beta is uh, pi over 6. And we're using this formula. So it's cosine pi over 4, cosine alpha, times cosine beta, which would be pi over 6, minus sine. Remember, if it's a plus in the parentheses, it's a minus over here. Uh, sine of pi over 4 cosine pi over 6, uh, sorry, sine pi over 6. So cosine pi over 4, cosine pi over 6, minus sine pi over 4, sine pi over 6. Right, because this is the alpha, beta, and this is the alpha and the beta. Now what we have to do is use our unit circle knowledge to finish this thing off. The cosine of pi over 4 happens to be the square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of pi over 6 happens to be the square root of 3 over 2. Then there's a minus sign. Then we do the sine of pi over 4, that's the square root of 2 over 2. Then we do the sine of pi over 6, which is 1 half. And that's going to be, is that the same answer as we had before? I think it is. Uh, the square root of 6 over 4 minus the square root of 2 over 4. So it's a coincidence, but nonetheless, the cosine of 5 pi over 12 is the same as the sine of pi over 12, and that is square root of 6 minus square root of 2 over 4. And it shouldn't shock us that we get the same answer. Remember, with our unit circle values, there's only so many numbers that we have to choose from that the, um, the values repeat themselves as you wrap around the circle. So again, we have square root of 6 minus square root of 2 over 4. We can't simplify this any further. You just have to leave it like that, even if it makes you uncomfortable with those radicals. Okay, so that is one way we use these sum and difference formulas. We can find the value of other angles that aren't on the unit circle by breaking them down into pieces that involve values from the unit circle. Let me show you a couple other things we can do with these formulas. When we do our exercises, one of the things that we're going to do is practice using the formulas. And in particular, I'm going to give you an expression that's written out and ask you to simplify. Right? This one says simplify. And basically that just means figure out which formula they're, they're referring to and write the, uh, the original sum or difference. Let's bring in our list of formulas again so I can show you how this works. Uh, this is a cosine, cosine, sine, sine. This is going to be one of those cosine formulas. So let's bring those up. So here we have our cosine sum and difference formulas. 
and I'm paying particular attention to this minus sign right here. Notice that shows up in this left-hand sum formula. And then all we have to do is figure out what's alpha and what's beta so that we can write down the sum. Well, hopefully it's clear to you that we are using negative 4x as alpha and negative x as beta. And then same thing here, alpha and beta. So from that, I know that this is just going to be cosine of the alpha plus the beta. So to simplify this, I'm simply going to write down that answer. Cosine of negative 4x plus negative x. Now we can simplify this further because we've had algebra class and we know how to add negative 4x plus negative x. That's just negative 5x. And so to finish this thing off, I'm going to write cosine of negative 5x. And that is the simplified version of this nasty mess up at the top. That whole expression is really just cosine negative 5x. Let's take a look at another one. Here we're asked to simplify sine of negative 5u cosine negative 6u minus cosine negative 5u sine negative 6u. And let's bring in our formulas so we can figure out which one this is. Since this is a sine cosine sine cosine, I know it is a sine. And so here are those sine sum and difference formulas. In this case, we want to pay attention to this sign right here. It's a minus sign, which shows up right here in this difference formula. And so I know I'm going to need to use the difference version, this one, when I write this thing out. Now all I need is the alpha and the beta. Well, here's alpha, here's beta. Here's alpha, here's beta. And so our answer for this one is going to be the sine of negative 5u minus negative 6u. Be careful with this one because it's minus a negative. So this is really just sine of negative 5u plus 6u. And from algebra class, remember, we can do this. Like We know how to do negative 5u plus 6u. That's just u. So the whole expression here boils down to sine of u. And that's our answer for the simplified form. Nothing fancy there, just identifying which formula to use, and then we just work backwards, right? Instead of going in this direction, like we do sometimes with our problems, we're going to go in the opposite direction. So we're actually trying to start on the right and work our way to the left. We've got one more type of problem, and then we'll get this video wrapped up. So very similar to what we've done before with some of our introductory identities, we are just going to verify some identities. And so remember, when we're verifying, our goal is to take the thing on the left and do math to it so that it ends up looking like the thing on the right. And in particular, since we're in the sum and difference uh, section here, we're going to use our sum and different formulas sum and difference formulas. So this is a cosine sum. Eventually you'll have enough familiarity with these formulas to just know which one to use, but for now let's bring up the cosine formulas and take a look at it. So here on the left we have our cosine sum formula, and that says that the cosine of alpha plus beta is equal to cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. So we just need to identify which one's alpha and which one's beta. Well the first one in the parentheses is alpha, and our theta takes the place of our beta. So when we write out this expression, I'm basically taking this thing on the left, and I'm just rewriting it using this formula. So I'm going to have cosine of 3 pi over 2, which is cosine alpha, times cosine of theta, minus sine of alpha, which is 3 pi over 2, times sine of beta, which is theta. And I keep doing math to simplify this thing until I end up with just sine of theta. Okay, cosine of pi over 2, whoa, baby, that's 0. So this is just 0 times cosine theta. So this whole thing is 0. Minus the sine of 
3 pi over 2 is negative 1, and then we have sine theta, which we can't simplify because theta is a variable. But this is enough to get us what we need. When you do 0 minus negative 1 times sine theta, you get sine theta. Those negative signs cancel each other out, and we are done. We made it. We showed that this identity is true, right? We verified it because we ended up with our target, which was sine of theta. Let's do one more verification, and then we'll wrap this video up. So here we're going to work on a sine sum formula, the sine of theta plus pi, and we're trying to show that it equals negative sine of theta. We work on this side and try and make it look like the right. Let's bring in our sine sum formula and assign these and rewrite this. So here on the left we have that sum formula for sine. We just need to figure out which one's alpha and which one's beta, and I think you know by now the first one is the alpha and the second one is the beta. And so wherever I see alpha I'm going to put theta, and wherever I see beta I'm going to put pi. Let's rewrite this side and see if we can make it look like the right. So instead of sine of theta plus pi, we're going to do sine of theta times cosine pi plus cosine theta times sine of pi. And then from our unit circle, we know that the cosine of pi is 1 and the sine of pi is 0. And so that means we just have sine of theta plus 0, which is just sine of theta. All right, that's not bad, but why did I end up with a minus sign? Aha! I'm not even going to rewind this. I'm just going to show you what my mistake was. The cosine of pi is not 1. It's negative 1. Oops, let me make that red. Cosine of pi is negative 1. Messed up my unit circle value there. Uh, and so when you multiply negative 1 times sine of theta, we do get negative sine theta, which is what we were shooting for up here, right? I was trying to get negative sine of theta, and I almost messed it up because I couldn't remember my unit circle very well. The cosine of pi is negative 1, and that was enough to fix this problem, right? On this side, I was correct. So the sine of pi is 0, so these cancel out and turn into 0. But this guy is a negative 1, and negative 1 times sine is negative sine of theta. So we verified it. I hope this has helped you see how we use the uh, sum and difference formulas, and you can use this video uh, to help you complete the exercises that I've posted for you. If you get stuck, you know where to find me. In the meantime, take care.